Burbuck Boone was preparing some wood for the fire in order to provide warmth and light for his family. He added some wood to the fire because he had noticed that one of the logs had hollowed out and a family of termites was busy nibbling away at the tender wood at the center of the log. Since he didn't want to hurt the termites, he brought the hollow log up to his lips and began to blow. The family of termites was thrown out into the night sky, and they formed the Milky Way and the stars, and they lit up the entire countryside. And then, the vibrations of the didgeridoo blessed Mother Earth for the first time. Its vibrations would protect the Earth and all of the spirits of the Dreamtime for the rest of eternity. At the beginning of time, in the dream time, there were no contrasts and the world was completely flat. Then some creatures who were half man, half animal emerged from the earth. These beings, our ancestors, moved around and hunted and fought and in doing so they modeled the earth. They created the contrasts in the landscape. They created the rivers and the plains, the trees and the dunes, the animals and the plants. They created water, air, and fire. Exhausted by all of their activities, they then returned into the earth. Sometimes, the spirits transform themselves into a rock, a tree, or other parts of the landscape. When this happens, they become sacred places, which only the men and the women who have been initiated have the right to see. We do not own the land. The land owns us. The earth is our mother, the starting point where it all began. Dig up a little bit of the earth, and you will see that it represents where we came from and where we are destined to end. The earth is our food, our soul, our spirit, our identity. We have no borders, no enclosures, no property rights. We belong to the earth. She is our spiritual world. Scientists of the world have freely exchanged their knowledge. This worldwide search for truth has led to the greatest of all discoveries, atomic energy. No one scientist or nation is responsible. The periodic law of the elements was discovered relativity by Einstein, a German. The atomic nucleus by Rutherford, a New Zealander. Atomic structure by the Dane, Niels Bohr. Positron by Anderson of the United States. The neutron by Chadwick of Great Britain. Artificial radioactivity by the Joliots of France. Uranium was transmuted by Fermi of Italy. 
The mesotron theory was developed by Yukawa in Japan. Barium was derived from uranium by Hahn of Germany. Uranium was split by Meitner of Austria. This pooling of knowledge is shared by all. There is no secret. When a neutron strikes, the atom is split. Released neutrons split other atoms. The result is atomic energy. Shall the people of the world use this energy for the destruction or the betterment of mankind? The United States used this power to destroy Hiroshima. radioactive rays, and in a matter of seconds, downtown New York would be a mass of ruins. Throughout the entire lower end of Manhattan, most people would be dead. All buildings from Washington Square to the Battery would be destroyed. In Chicago, from Halstead Street to Lake Michigan, and from Chicago Avenue to Roosevelt Road, the city would lie in ruins. In San Francisco, devastation would be complete from Pacific Avenue to Townsend Street and from Van Ness Avenue to the Ferry Building. One atomic bomb did this to a city and its people. ruthless aggressors of the past had no such weapon. A soldier of Alexander with one spear killed one. Napoleon's cannon in one firing killed 12. The Kaiser's big Bertha Killed 88. Hitler's B2 killed 168. Japan's war against the United States ended after a B29 dropped one atomic bomb that killed close to 100,000. The deadly power can be exerted at great distances. The first atomic bomb was dropped on a round trip of 3,000 miles on August 1945. On November 20th of that year, the effective range was extended to 8,000 miles. The United States had demonstrated that an atomic bomb could be launched to reach any country in the world. A grim reminder to all nations that had the bomb and this plane been in possession of the Axis powers, they could have conquered the world. would have been no defense against this weapon. A single plane would have broken through to destroy the heart of London. V2s with atomic warheads could have destroyed England. At the moment of surrender, Hitler had in the blueprint stage transoceanic rockets. 
which could have destroyed our city. U-boats could have surfaced off our shores and launched atomic rockets against vital targets. The fifth column would have had an even more insidious means of destruction. Parts of bombs could have been smuggled in, and under the cloak of darkness, infernal machines could have been assembled by saboteurs. It is therefore an imperative necessity that all the nations of the world unite to avert catastrophe. The United Nations must establish a worldwide control of atomic energy and of other weapons of mass destruction. make laws which will abolish war, laws which will hold the individual in all lands responsible for crime against world peace. Only through proper control of atomic energy can we answer the question how this great force may be used for the benefit of mankind. Atomic energy, freed from the menace of war, can be for all people, in all nations, the great fusing force of one world. The choice is clear, it is life or death.